Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, all the masters. I hope that you had a great night. Either you were sleeping or were having a party, whatever. And I have an important question for you today. Do you like table topics? <laughs> no. no. Yes. Okay. And I can guarantee you that you will change your view of the table topics now. So please help me warmly welcome the workshop leader for today, Daniel Sana. Come on. I believe from yesterday that life is, life is too short to waste in Toastmasters. And I, it is my strong belief that many of us, myself included, waste most of our time when we are doing table topics. I think that is wrong. I think we should not waste our time. We'll talk first about what table topics are. I think that many of us do not understand what table topics really are. And we, yet we do them all the time and we still don't know what it is. Second, I'll explain why we're talking about this. Then I'll give you a special approach to table topics, which I call the training approach. And then we go over a structure that will make sure if you use it, you'll always succeed. It always works, 60% of the time. Now let's begin. <laughs> what are table topics to you? What do you think that is? What table topics look like to you? What do they feel like to you? What is it? What does the word even mean? Improvisation. Always a surprise. Improvisation, surprise, yes. Stressful. Stressful, improvisation and surprise, yes. Exercise to get rid of stage fright. Exercise to get rid of stage fright, yes. Waiting for that green card to turn. <laughs> Waiting for the green card to turn. To relieve of, of, of the stress. Yes, that's what table topics are. I got five or six answers and only one of those was exercise. Most of those answers were anxiety, stressful, waiting for it to be over, improvisation, unexpected question. Now, somewhere deep down you all understand it's not just what we do in Toastmasters, we do it most of our lives. When I'm at work, when you're at work, do you ever get unexpected questions? Of course. Yeah. Anybody? Is it stressful? Uh, can it be stressful? It could, could, it be, could be stressful. Could it feel like improvisation? No? Good, you're a good one. I like that. <laughs> Anybody where it feels like you need to improvise something on the spot when you're not prepared entirely? Yes. Yeah, yeah that can happen, I guess. That can. See, now, I believe this happens not only in work, it happens in real life too. Now when my girlfriend asks me, where are we going for this weekend? I'd better be ready with an answer. It better be structured. I'd better not let her know that I'm really stressed about this. It better have some logic, and it better be delivered with some enthusiasm. <laughs> like, at, like at work, no? You see, table topics are what we do in life, most of the time. That brings me to my second point. Why are we talking about this? Well, now imagine, your boss asks you a question every week on the elevator. Now imagine, he could buy some magic, by some special approach, or a structure, improve your answer consistently by 73%. Now what would that do to your career prospects over one year? If you consistently answer your boss way better, if you sound enthusiastic, if you sound like you have a structure, if you make the impression, this guy knows what he's talking about. Now, what could that do to your career? Anybody thinks that might have an impact? Or with your clients, perhaps? Yeah, maybe? It could have an impact, right? Yeah. I, I believe it could, somehow. You know, if I get a question from a client, yeah, I'm a lawyer, and, and they often have tricky questions. They expect me to know everything. And again, it's a table topic. They expect me to answer in a structured, informed-looking, 
somewhat enthusiastic, even optimistic manner. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's the same all the time. And I believe we're not training for this properly. I believe some of us are not training for it at all when we're at table topics. Because we do not have what I call the training approach. Now I'll talk about the training approach. I believe that every table topic should be approached as training for real life. We're not there just to, to stand there and listen to it somehow. I think that is plain wrong. It begin okay, when do you think a table topic starts? And now we're talking about table topic as the exercise at Toastmasters, to be clear. When does that start? When you go on stage. Yeah. Okay, when does a table topic start in real life? The real life one. And the question I suppose. When you enter the office. Yes. Okay, you see both answers are correct. For some of us, it begins when we get the answer, when we get the question. <coughs> but maybe for some of our competitors, it begins in the morning when they're commuting to work. They're already thinking. What, what they're thinking about is, they're listening, what they're trying to perceive is, huh, I'm going to work. I'll get asked some questions. What is the best structure that I can use for that in the work? Is it a storytelling structure? Is my boss the kind of guy who will like to listen to a story? Or would he like his points clear, straight and brief? See? For them it already began in the morning. And now they have a head start. Because they're thinking. Also, there's not just listening for the structure, there's listening for the scenario. Okay, when we're listening to a table topic master in Toastmasters, we're not listening just for the question, or we shouldn't be. They're giving us a scenario. For example, they say, this is the news. You will be delivering the news on TV. They're not giving you just a question. They're giving you a scenario. You should be in the role. And this is amazing in table topics for competitions, for example, because it makes it so much more fun. I take it to real life. Now imagine you listen to the scenario and you're thinking about it. Are they expecting me to be, to be fun and, and careless about this? Huh? Or do they expect me to, to be really serious and appear like I'm thinking about real hard? And if you don't get the scenario right, the structure doesn't really matter because you will not be credible. You will not be fun. You will be someone who's not doing their job right. You don't know what you're doing. And so, just to sum up the listening, you're listening to the question, you're listening to the scenario, you're listening to the approach. And you think about it. Some, you often have a head start. And okay, in table topics in Toastmasters, you can't do it on the tram. But the moment the first guy gets on the stage to speak and you're, you're not that guy, then you know in what tone the table topics are going to be. And that's when you start thinking, what is the structure for this? What is the approach that I need to take? See, then you get a head start. Then you have seven more minutes for preparation than the other guy. And in those masses, it could be considered cheating, unfriendly. In real life, yeah, do it. <laughs> in real life, it's not cheating. In real life, that's being prepared. <laughs> I recommend. Works every time. I'd like you, uh, to talk about what do you do once you get on the stage. See, many of us are nervous and we tend to want to get it over with as quickly as possible. We see the green light. I recommend you try something else as well. Last week, and I consider myself a, an experienced chess master, last week I'm delivering a table topic or delivering something, maybe an evaluation. And I get there and I start talking immediately. That is wrong. <laughs> Imagine you do something like this. You walk to the stage, look around, and you let the silence linger. 
You take a deep breath so that everybody can hear you being relaxed. And start talking. To me, that, that is owning the stage. And sometimes you are not able to do it. Which brings me to my second point. What if you are not able to look confident? Well, I see oftentimes what we do is we do not train to be our best selves, which is what is expected. We try to pretend like we are not trying so that we cannot be heard. I'll say it again in different words. If I pretend like I don't care, and like oh, I'm doing comedy and this is this, this nothing, then okay, they will laugh. And there's no way you will get hurt by, by failing to deliver a proper content. The trouble is, in real life, we're not expected to do like we, we do, act like you don't care. We're expected to do our best under the circumstances. So my recommendation is, within the training approach, embrace the awkwardness, own it. Own that you're not prepared and do the best you can and fake it till you make it. Because that's what we're expected to do in real life. We're not expected to shield ourselves from, from being seen as we're trying and failing. No, I want you to try as best as you can to do exactly what you're told. The opposite would be, I'll give you an example of not trying your best, is ah, that's going to be real hard. And I'm commenting on the question. Is your boss going to be interested in you, you having funny comments about the question being real hard? About this catching you by surprise? I don't think so. Or be like, no, just get on with it. Because it's training for your life, and as we've established, that can have huge impact on your private and professional life. Our delivery. There are two things that I've noticed in delivering. Uh, I believe clarity is hugely underestimated. We, myself included, maybe most of myself, I understand, my, I understand my stuff, I'm good at it. And then I believe that when I give it to you in five words, you'll understand it too. And then I listen to you in the pub and like, hey, I, I'm sure it was interesting, but I never understood that. No? <laughs> Why it matters to tabletop specifically? That's the transitions. I believe that you must do it in awkwardly clear manner, which is now I'm talking about point one. Then you go, that was point one. Now we're moving over to point two. Make awkwardly clear transitions. That's a very good practice for you to get your point across. And the second thing I've noticed is, for some reason I believe this is mostly for salespeople. I don't know why that is, but I've, I've discovered that. They get on stage and say, hello everybody. They really shock you, and it's, it's, it's painful for me. Like, I'm writing something down, and they do this to me. And that would be okay. <laughs> it would be okay if they managed to maintain the energy level throughout. However, what happens with people like this is the, hello, everybody, and then slowly, the shh, and the energy veins. And my recommendation is think about rationing your energy. I think if you had pe hit people like a truck at the beginning <laughs> and then just vein off, then it will be plain unpleasant and not even interesting. Now try to think about it. Hmm, what is the highest energy they can take at the beginning? And again, it's about listening uh, and, and perceiving what's going on. If the previous three speakers were really, really loud, maybe you want to be the soothing voice. If they were really quiet, you may use more energy, but you believe maybe 10% above their level, and then you build it up gradually, so that you have a grand finale. Not that, you know, just hit them with it. So those are, and that leads me to the trade-off. There is a trade-off between fun and learning. And I often have this in speeches, and sometimes in evaluations. There are, usually I can choose between two approaches. One is going to be the more fun one. 
you know, tell, tell jokes, take it less seriously, especially in table topics. Table topics are amazing for exaggeration, for taking, role, taking up roles and personas that are not me. And I can do that. And then there's the other approach that is not going to win me uh, the popularity contest voting in, in the club uh, table topic <coughs> competition. And that is structured learning. And sometimes when you have uh, a clear assignment and you, do, you try your best to do what the assignment says, you're not going to win. Most often you're not going to win because somebody is going to uh, tell jokes that are unrelated to it, that they've re read on the internet. They're going to win. And my personal approach is, you're here to train. I think that if you consistently trade valuable uh, training for, for fun, and your competition does it the other way around, they always go for the valuable training, they might win. It's not all black though. You can have fun, you can take crazy personas. Like, you can try to, ex to be real angry, you know? And exaggerate it and go crazy about it and wave your arms and, and go, but do it thinking, okay, maybe this can be useful when I talk to my real estate agent when they're negotiating the fee with me. I try to be the real angry one, do it right. No, even if you're having fun, even if you're exaggerating, even if you're being crazy, I do recommend you do it with a purpose and know what you're doing it for. Then you learn. Couple of notes. Competition is a bit different. Competition is I will not be talking about competition speeches here or competition table topics. That's a, that's a completely different manner. Just as a note for you, in competition you're not training for anything. In competition you're not trying to get outside your uh, comfort zone. You're not trying to get the most clear structure. What you're trying to do, the only thing you can fake at a competition is your confidence. Otherwise your gestures, your delivery, the emotion, that must be real. That must come from you. That's a different discipline. Competition is not training. But here we're talking about training. So just to get the distinction clear. Now I'll give you the structure you've all been waiting for. Ta da! Wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, very simple at first sight, you yeah? know? Anybody thinks it's simple, maybe too simple? That's good. That's, uh, this, there are many structures. This one, thesis point one, point two, uh, it's uh, delivered from a regular speech. You could, uh, it's like a speech structure. It's used, it's, uh, it can be used in business set up, uh, settings very well. It can be used for table topics. It can be used for a speech, surprisingly. It's not the only option. There are other options, like storytelling or others. You can read on those. But today, we'll do the structure only. And as you're listening, as you know, we mentioned, when you're listening to the table topic, when you're perceiving what's going on, you're selecting between the structures that you already know. And I suggest you learn about other structures so that you can select the appropriate one. But today we're doing the business one. The thesis, point one, point two. What is the difference between thesis and uh, the table topic? Would anybody like to guess? Is it the same, is it different? I think a table topic is anything the table topic master says. Yes. And thesis is a statement, like clear opinion or something, like how we open the table that we made. The opening sentence, maybe. Yes, very much so. See, in the table topic, you get a question or a statement or something. You get the assignment. That is not the thesis. The thesis is what you come up with based on that. Now, if you look here, you have a worksheet. We'll be doing uh, some work today. Now, to give you some examples, <coughs> you see in the second line, if I get a table topic assignment, public good, then there are a number of things that I can talk about. But I believe 
I mean, and this is how I chronologically prepare for table topics. I begin, okay, so what is the te topic that I can talk about, about public good? Is there something I believe in? Is there something I can argue for? Is there something where I, have I could have relevant experience? And that will be my thesis. For example, taxes are good. All right, it's something I can argue. A thesis must be short, must be clear, must be strong. What it should not be is ambiguous. It's a statement. Uh, I'm going to talk about taxes. Is that a statement that is short, cle clear and not ambiguous? Okay, so what, am I going, what is my position on taxes from that statement? Still too wide. You have no idea what my position is from I'm, I'm going to talk about taxes. How would you phrase it so that there, it's clear what the opinion is, to make it clear? How can taxes influence your budget? Okay, it's better, but it's not a statement. It's, it's a narrower topic. It's still a topic, it's not a statement. Without, Some, without taxes, society wouldn't work at all. Yeah, that is a clear statement. It's my firm belief, without taxes, a society wouldn't work. It's not too controversial, though. Like, who would argue with that? Without 50% taxes, society would work. <laughs> Alright, we're getting there. A 50% increase ta in taxes will improve the life of us immeasurably. <laughs> Oh, that's an opening. That's a thesis. <laughs> okay, uh, let's try someone. I'll give you a table topic. The table topic master gives you the future is now. Now give me some, some thesis for the future is now. Don't write it down yet. So you'll do that in 38 seconds. But for now I want you to get more examples so that you know what you're doing. The robots future. are inviting us right now. The robots are inviting us right now. Okay, that's, that's a good one for ta uh, fun table topics. <laughs> no, it, it makes sense. And yeah. maybe you can argue that. Toasters everywhere. Huh? Like toasters are everywhere. <laughs> toasters are everywhere. Okay, it's not really controversial. <laughs> 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 All right. Like, you you're getting it. Okay, give me something else. Uh, okay, it was loving failure. Give me a thesis. Loving failure. Loving failure. <coughs> what would your thesis be? Any sentence that can be somewhat related to loving failure. I learn the most when I fail. <laughs> okay, what's the... Okay, is it controversial? No. It could be to some people, not into his masters. But then in a way it has to be controversial. It's my opinion. Maybe it doesn't have to be controversial. That's a very good question. The reason is, this is for table topics. In case you're doing it for... in your real life, it doesn't have to be controversial. It should, not, maybe it should not be controversial. What it needs to be is clear and precise so that we know what you mean, but not controversial. In, uh, in table topics exercise in our club, it's more fun if it is. But okay, I will accept if it's not controversial as well. As long as it's clear and it's not obvious. Is that an acceptable answer? Yeah, in a way. I mean, in my opinion, even if it's obvious, <coughs> if I give you points from my own experience, I might give you a different perspective at the end. I think even if I don't spell it out from the beginning, because it's my experience. On it. I, will ex I will accept that as long as it's very clear. Lukas? I just want to say for table obviously you need to grab people's attention. If you say something that's obvious, people say they will not pay attention to you. That's, I think, what the advantage of saying something about uh, Yeah. I, I, I understand the advantage, and, but in my opinion, I don't have to stay only with this. Right. Yeah, that, it's one of the options. It's an option. I'm exercising uh, for real life, like, I don't have to be controversial. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is, that is a valid point. If you want to have more fun and get more attention, in the exercise, do it controversial. 
if you're talking to your boss or to your girlfriend, it better not be that controversial. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that acceptable? Yeah. All right. So now, as quickly as possible, try to come up with a very clear and concise uh, thesis that may or may not be controversial as you choose, and f uh, fill them out in here. Everybody has something to write with? Yeah, well, could you give this yeah, bottle with me? It's good ones. Everybody else? Okay, good one. <laughs> okay. If you need more than five to seven words, then it's not too short. Just try it. Uh, this is to train for you to get the thesis or what you're going to talk about quickly and and precisely. If you have, if you need three sentences to write it down, that's not a thesis. That's already getting to some points. We'll do that later. Okay, everybody's got some statements. No. No, I don't, I don't know what I'm Okay. Uh, actually, I don't understand what you want. Hey, all right, okay. Uh, well, the future is now, and? Okay, the, ta okay, the table, do you understand uh, what the line says, the, where it says the TT topic? You know what that is? What is that line? The team of the table topic. Yes, that's what the table topic master tells you. Okay, these are examples, the first, uh, Lines are examples, then you have t TT topic. That's what the table topic master tells you. Yeah, I guess that's different in Vienna. We don't have it this way. We get oh. pictures. Every candidate gets a picture to analyze or discuss or something. That's probably why I'm not in Hungary. Oh, all right. So but it's clear for everybody else? <coughs> all right. Okay, we have it instead of a picture. Uh, the table topic master gives us a sentence or a statement like this. Oh. And then we analyze it probably very much like you do. Oh, okay. That's okay. Oh, that's so, so you make a thesis for this, like, if they say the future is now, you have to, you make a sentence that you, the topic of your speech, basically. Okay, what I'm going to be speaking about in this round, or, or what? In, in table topics, yes. Uh -huh. That's a practice for table topics. Okay, you're about finishing. Okay, anybody has some that they're really proud of that they'd like to share? Okay, I want to hear some of the best ones. Come on, give me. Yeah, now you must be proud of some. The best business idea ever. All right. I had uh, selling coconuts to blind people. What is selling coconuts? All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> selling coconuts to blind people. I. Uh, that's. That's new, it could be controversial. Point one and two. We'll get to that. Okay. We'll get to that. Okay, anybody else proud of something? No. Okay. Yeah, I've got one. Jetting from Europe to um, the US within half hour. Okay, getting to you. Now, we'd like you to make a statement. 
getting to us within a half hour is possible or is not possible or is absolutely essential. Because uh, if you just say that, we don't know what you want to do. If you say getting from US to Europe or the other way around in a half hour, we have no idea what you want to say. And you have no idea what yeah, you want to say either. Future, that maybe one day we'll have the possibility to travel quickly from one continent to the other. All right. The, yes, that, that is a good one. You can work with that. Now we have to move on to how you create the points. Now see, the thesis, you can come up with that quite quickly, it's, it should be pretty easy. And all you need to do after that is get about, think about two points that can support that, you can talk about it. These can be stories. See, maybe you have a story about how you sold a coconut to a blind person. <laughs> Arguments, you may say, yeah, blind people, they will buy anything. <laughs> Maybe not true, maybe not proper training for life, maybe it's just being too funny at the expense of valuable earning. <laughs> uh, you might win a prize in your club, so <clears throat> if that's your goal, you may definitely do that. You can combine a story and an argument or some analysis. You can have two stories that support your thesis. Now I'd like you to come up with two points for each of the theses uh, that you have written down. And again, it should be very short, should be something you can talk about. So you have a thesis, and it should be just, just the headings of the things you're going to talk about. Either a story, or an argument, or could be some kind of analysis if you like to do that. And it, again, it shouldn't be not more than five words per one point, because then it's not point, it's already developing the case. <coughs> Okay, who'd like to share the first one, so that everybody gets on the right track on what we're doing? Okay. All right. Um, my thesis is selling the air. Selling uh, the air is a good idea. Or point one is uh, that air pollution is very high in some cities. All right, you can talk about air pollution. And the second... See, this is a good point. Point one. And it's, uh, it's closely related to selling air. You can see the logic. All right. <laughs> and there's going to be a point two someday. It could be a story or another argument <laughs> or development of the business plan. All right. The demand is there, apparently. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, so go on. Uh, now we understand what we're supposed to do. Uh, go on, create some. It will be fun. You do not develop the point at this point, you just just uh, figure out what it is. It should re you should really be able to do this process in 30 seconds if uh, for your table topic, because that's the format, that's why you need to be do able to do it in 30 seconds. Do not overthink it, just... Right, somebody's got two points already? Yeah. yeah. Okay, would you, who, okay, would you like to share? <coughs> the thesis, uh, the topic is the future is now. The thesis is uh, soon we can travel to Mars. Soon we can travel to Mars, that's, okay. Point one is uh, first uh, realizable rock, uh, rocket landed in the USA. All right. 
And uh, point two is with these reusable rockets, we can build a space station, a space station for uh, as a dock for the new spaceships on the orbit to save the fuel. Yeah. That's right. So yeah, thesis is very clear. Soon we'll go to Mars and we have two points. Reusable rocket has landed so the technology is there. And second, the technology that is there can get us to Mars. Thanks. Very good sense. Now if you have these thesis and two points which you should be able to do very quickly, you're set. You, you can go for the table topic or whatever it is. You can talk to your boss. You, know? you, tell, them what, you tell them the position. It must be very clear what the position is then you have two things to support that. So now you're on stage, now you have to open. There are a number of ways you can open. One, that's good for... It could be good for some bosses, it's definitely good for our club exercise, and that is a contradictory statement. Many people believe A, but I believe B. Many people believe that taxes are too much of a burden to the regular person, I believe we're not paying enough taxes. <laughs> See, that's a contradictory statement. And second, there must be a map of the, what you're going to say. So, and I'll prove so on two clear arguments. I'll give you two clear arguments. And then you say the points. You give an opening that catches the attention and the map of the speech. It's very important for clarity, otherwise the people will be lost. Second option, it's a you-centered question. How do you feel about taxes? You see, you get them involved, it's you. How do you, audience, feel about taxes? How do you feel about travel to Mars? See, now they're thinking about how they feel about travel to Mars. I'll show you on my two technology news, we'll get to Mars sooner than you think. You get their attention and you tell them what you're going to tell them, you get an orientation. If you don't want to be controversial at all, like talking to your girlfriend, can happen. <laughs> we, this morning, I decided we were going to have an amazing trip. It gets their attention, it's not controversial, and it's clear what I want to say. <laughs> now, remember, something to get your attention and tell them what you're going to tell them. Then you tell your two points. You must transition very clearly and tell them, okay, first, reusable rocket has just landed. That's a new step in technology and that's the first thing I want to talk about. Then you talk about it. See, that was the first thing, but there is another thing. Very clear transition. And then, okay, now I want you to try some openings. Uh, give me your thesis and then give me your opening. Who'd like to try? I'll try loving failure. Huh? I will try loving failure. Okay, failure. loving failure. What is the thesis? Um, is it, you mean the opening now? No, the thesis. Okay, it's a way to learn to improve and identify opportunities. Good. Failure is a way to learn and identify opportunities. That is a precise thesis. All right. And then I'm supposed to give you an opening now? Yes, give me an opening. So, who could ever love failure? Who loves failure? Okay, that's a good one. I don't. I, it, it makes me anxious, so I... You got my attention. <laughs> who loves failure? Um, Good, I like that. It's How could anyone love failure? But it, it opens up. That's a good springboard. Yeah, that's a good one. Anybody else? Give me an opening. I have, okay. I have a thesis. Uh, it's for robots. Uh, legalizing robots' marriages. All right. And we need to legalize robot marriages now. Uh, thesis, uh, I'm sorry, the opening is Have you ever considered your uh, toaster having feelings for other toasters? Okay, <laughs> you got my attention there. Have you ever considered your toaster having feelings for other toasters? Okay. No, it's, it's a new question. It really involves the audience in that. That works. I see you're getting this. That's, that's good. Then we have to conclude this. A conclusion, that's the thing that they're left with. They will not remember anything 
but your conclusion most of the time. It's safe to assume that. And so it should be either a very clear takeaway, the, the very sum of the information that they're going to get go away with, like, oh yeah, I, I really changed my mind, we need to allow close to marriage. It's just even the same color tastes close to marriage. We have to do that. Or it can be a call to action, it should be a call to action. Call to action, you can have a direct one. Give me a direct call to action for whatever you wrote. Vote for robot marriages. Vote for robot marriages. Sign a petition for robot marriages now. <laughs> okay, that's... Uh, give me a call to action uh, by question. Can you do that? Would you vote for robot marriages? Okay, would you vote for robot marriages? Are you ready to pay more taxes? Are you ready to pay more taxes? Who's ready for robot marriages? Who's ready for robot marriages? I like that one. It's open question. It's always better. Yeah, that's open question is good. Are you uh, going to break up your girlfriend now? That's a good one. It's an attention getter. What can you do today? To support robot marriages, I like. The, I personally, it's my personal favorite. What can you do today? And then they just start thinking what they can do today. And then when they come up with it, it's their idea, so they're more likely to do it. Get an open question. Oh yes, that is. And it's not just a takeaway. It must follow clearly from point one and point two. So when you do that, you must say. Now that we know that toasters have feelings and that we've established that this is a liberal country that, that thrives on liberal values, how do you feel about toaster marriage? <laughs> See, you would think that people remember your points, but they don't. It's safe to assume that they've forgotten everything, so you have to remind them so that your conclusion follows clearly from your points. Now to summarize. All of us assume they forgot and that they will not understand. Get your attention, either a question or a clear statement. Your position must be very clear. Then give two points. No, you, give, you tell, and then you tell them the points you're going to make. Then you make those points, transition very clearly in between them, and then conclude again with some call to action or, or some clear takeaway. Ideally, a question that will let them think that they came, came up with it themselves. And as a concluding remark, I believe that table topics can be incredibly useful in life. I believe that everything we're doing can be incredibly useful in life, but only if we do it properly. If we think about it, how is table topics going to help me? That's not enough. What is table topics good for? It's not enough. What is the proper question to ask about table topics? How can I use it in my life? That's better. So why fear table topics? <coughs> okay, now we're getting back. <laughs> now to me, uh, from the utility uh, perspective is, how can I maximize my own benefit from table topics? What are all the things that I can and must do to learn as much as I can over the time I'm spending doing that. And I believe this principle applies to every activity in life. How do I get the most of what I'm doing? What are the things I need to consider to get the most of this time and of the energy? Because the time will pass anyway and you will not have gotten what you needed. And I'll leave you with that. Daniel for this uh, awesome workshop and I think that everybody from, of us will now s uh, take the benefit of, ex of the practicing table topics for hours and we will use it. Uh, so I would like to give you this uh, certificate and thank you again for your preparation and what you Thank have. you, thank you.